an afternoon of experiences from um, the new work network. Okay. Um, so uh, a sense of humour can be a very powerful thing. It can give you extra friends and lovers and it can get you jobs and it can even get you free services. I found myself that um, in particular if I go to my hairdresser to get my hair cut and I'm particularly funny and tell her lots of jokes, um, I don't have to pay. Um, and I've been, I, don't, what, what, there's, I think there's an expression for it, maybe you could help me, when you're, someone seduces you by their sense of humour. Do you know that expression? No. No. <laughs> no one's got a sense of humour. But there is one, I'm sure. Um, so, but also jokes can offend people and upset people. Um, and so over the last day, We've been collecting some jokes from the festival goers and um, we've come to this project with quite an open mind and really we haven't really been offended by any of them. Maybe there was one that was offensive. But um, we've also noted that jokes that play with that idea of um, what is politically correct are very popular within this particular festival. Um, we have also observed that the problem with lots of jokes is that they are very difficult to be remembered and that they don't fit on a whole text message. Um, and that's it really, so I'll just hand you over to... Great, um, thank you. So, I'm the warm-up Max. Uh, I'm here to warm you up now and I'm the one who's got to take the edge off this. Uh, I've got I've got to get you guys ready for her, um, and Ali's nearly ready now, so she'll be on in a minute. Uh, you know that will be the main event. Uh, Tom and I have been egging her on to do this, and she can't really back out now. And she probably wishes that she'd never mentioned uh, that she wanted to try doing stand up. Um, she said that she wanted to, someone to tell her what to do, and she said that she wanted the fear. Uh, to see what happens when she's just faced with the crowd of all of you, sitting there and waiting to be entertained. Um, I've been telling her that it'll all be fine, and that it'll be okay, um, and I've been winding her up a bit. And I think, I think she's pretty nervous, and I don't really know whether she's got the set or not uh, prepared. But she's going to need a round of applause, uh, so you're all going to need to put your hands together You'll need whooping and cheering so that it's like a, a kind of proper stand-up gig, okay? So come on, I want you to give it up, I want you to go wild in the aisles, I want you to give her a big warm hand, I want you to welcome to the stage the one, the only, Ellie Harrison! <laughs> guys um, this is not going to be your normal stand-up gig um, it's not being performed by a professional comedian and it is not in the slightest bit prepared in fact I've not written any notes I've not even <laughs> prepared a single joke yeah. what I wanted was the experience of total terror of being <laughs> in front of a crowd of people <laughs> and not knowing quite what to say at all. So, all morning I have been thinking of ways of trying to get out of this, because it was yesterday <laughs> afternoon that we kind of set the date of 2.30 Sunday when I would turn up on this stage to try to entertain a crowd of people. So, once the date was set, the time was in place. <laughs> I had little, little, um, chance of getting out of it and so to get, <laughs> to get on to the joke <laughs> to get on to the joke that I didn't even get dressed I still got my pyjamas on um, and actually I deliberately didn't drink any beer I drank a lot of beer last night and stayed up um, until accidentally 10 past 5 um, then I crawled into my tent and slept for about 
no, it was about three hours. And then when I went back to sleep at about eight, after a little toilet break, I started to think about being up here and being in front of all these people and how terrifying it would be. And I couldn't quite sleep and it was, it was quite an anxious kind of restless sleep. And then all morning, I just had this sort of horrible feeling in my stomach about what it would be like to, and what I would say, like how on earth I would continue to speak for at least five minutes or whatever would be <laughs> the adequate time <laughs> for, for, for a comedy set and how, how on earth I would try to recall these jokes that all these fantastic people that we met in the field yesterday um, told us to, to kind of to get me prepared for today. And actually maybe maybe I could just regale one joke. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that was a joke actually told to us by our lovely barman here, which is a bar themed joke, which I'm sure a lot of you know because it is quite <laughs> <laughs> I planned that. <laughs> I planned that what to do with me. Um so I I <laughs> <laughs> a woman walks into a bar and <laughs> good, good okay, maybe maybe I should just do maybe I should just no, I won't do the burning manning. I'm not gonna do the burning manning because it never goes down very well. Um <laughs> A woman walks into a bar <laughs> and orders a she wants a cocktail. And so she orders a double entendre, <laughs> and the barman gives her one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Too slow, people. I thought I was going to say that you could either laugh at me or with me, <laughs> or not at all. <laughs> but it was more about the experience of me being stood up here and being completely and utterly terrified and embarrassed. Um, and having all this unnecessary attention <laughs> on it. So, um, the other thing that I didn't quite plan was how to finish my set. <laughs> how to just round it off. I planned it together. Just a plan. <laughs> but you're doing a good job. I'll give you that 20 quid later. <laughs> so, uh, to conclude, um, was it the heart attack? Yeah. <laughs> we'll just all turn round. Oh, <laughs> 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 <